Hey gamer, today I want to talk to you about Luther, which just finished its Kickstarter, but it's not too late to go in and do a late back. I backed it at the ridiculously premium version of all the upgraded components, uh, but not with the epic dice tower that it comes with. So I have this open up here in Tabletop Simulator so that we can take a look here. If I zoom out here, it is a massive game. It is going to take up your entire table. However, it features artwork from Vincent Dutrait, which is so pretty. I love their artwork style. The game itself isn't actually that heavy of a Euro. We, we've played it a couple times here on Tabletop Simulator. It plays very smoothly. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and I, I love the mechanics that are in it here. Uh, so let's take a look at it. The main thing that you're doing here is trying to appease these patrons. The patrons themselves have a musical style here and they have an instrument style. Uh, and these are the requirements in order to complete the patron. These are the points that you're going to get, and then you're going to move up on this reputation track. And then the cool part is once you have actually completed a patron, they are going to slide into your player board here and give you this little bit of a bonus every time that you go ahead. And on this one, this is a round start bonus. On some other ones, they have bonuses for the various actions here. So all of the actions here have an icon related to them. And so that will be located on the card itself. So these ones here are like end game or um, every round icons. Here we have what's going to happen at the end of a game here. More end game ones. Uh, you can see here we've got one for any time that you do the finishing action, you get a plus one to your worker. Anytime you do the building action, you're getting minus one resource cube. Uh, so there's all those kind of really cool, cute mechanics here. Uh, so let's go over quickly the spots that you have. You've got the salon, which is where you're going to go and get new patrons for your board. Uh, what's cool here is when you get a patron, they're going to slot into one of the three slots on your board, and that's going to give you the type of reward. So this one's going to give you four money. This one's going to give you a resource of any type you want. And this one gives you an assistant. Then uh, you're actually going to go ahead and actually each round increase their patience, which is a really cool mechanic. And so each round, they're going to give you depreciating values of goods here. So this one here is uh, on one round, you're going to get $6. On another round, you're going to get $4. However, if you don't satisfy any of their conditions, they're going to say bye bye which is also really cool. However, anytime you satisfy one of these three conditions here, this completely resets, which is a nice, cool mechanic as well. There's a lot of awesome mechanics in this game that I really love, and I love the theme of it itself. Uh, so after the salon, you've got yourself a patron. This patron here wants um, a instrument to be created for them that is of the string type. So this one means that it has to be an instrument. And then these ones here mean that you need to either repair an instrument of that type or do a performance that matches this icon here. They are working on making this more clear because th the performance doesn't have anything to do with the instrument itself. It has to do with the musical style here. So the first aspect there would be to create a violin instrument. So we have one here. And so you would go to the guild with your worker and you can see the actions here. You would pick up a worker or you could get a resource. There's always a secondary action here. And then your worker has a rating value to it. And so you can actually increase what you get here. And then of course, this is a regular type of worker placement resource management type of thing. You need a wood cube and an animal fiber cube uh, in order to rough in this instrument because building an instrument is a two-step process. Uh, and then on the second step, you have to have another wood. So when you go and get this particular instrument here, it's going to go on the left side of your board. And you see these line up here. And this says, hey, in order to do the rough in action, you need to do one cube zoom. So once you have taken this action here to actually do the roughing in, you can take your violin and put it over to the finishing side. And then you need to spend these cubes. And then you finish the instrument and you can tuck it underneath your worker here. And then now you've satisfied one of those conditions. Once you've satisfied one of the conditions, this resets. Same thing goes for doing musical performances and doing repairs. 
Uh, so then let's take a look at the repair action here. This one is a repair for a violin instrument here. Once again, has these types of resources that you need. And then this is the reward you're going to get. Uh, an action, a cube placement, and then some points. And then once again, you've got the action space, and the action space gives you particular resources or bonuses for the space. Then you've got performances. So this one here is a Baroque performance. Uh, and what's cool here is this is based off of a luck of the die roll. So if your die roll is one to four, you're going to get four bucks, five to eight, two bucks, uh, and you get to do a performance token. This is what you actually have to do in order to meet the patrons is actually get through the performance to, to do a performance token. But what's neat is that the value of your performance, as you can see uh, down here, you're going to do your performance, or you can get three animal cubes, sorry. Uh, and then if you do four, you're going to go up on the performance track. But your value of your performance is going to be your die roll. Whee! So my value is two so far. And then it's going to be whatever particular worker that you place there. So if I placed my five worker here, I'm going to be five plus two is seven. That's up between the five and the eight. So I have actually succeeded this and I get a performance. Then you have this central board here. This is where all of the instruments that you create, the performances that you do, and the repairs that you make go on here. Those are all represented by three different types of uh, cubes. So here's your performance, here is your repair, and here is your instrument. Now, the instrument itself is hard to see from a top down perspective, uh, but these will go onto these boards like this. Now, another mechanic in this game, I know it's not a big Euro without multiple mechanics, is area control. So if you are the first person to do a performance or a repair, you're going to take the first chair spot and you're going to get this resource here. If you are the second person to come in, so let's see green player comes in here, they're just going to get this secondary reward here two points and thing uh, and, and an inspiration. However, if they also made a repair there, they would now take over first chair and they get the first chair bonus and they now have first chair. At the end of the game, however many first chairs you have is going to score you bonus points in addition to all the points that you're scoring during the game. However, all of this can be overridden by going here with an instrument. If you have an instrument here, you also gain first chair. If you're not the first person with an instrument there, you don't get first chair. There are also some special instruments in the game notified by this diamond here. Multiple people can go here and get first chair. So if you find those instruments in the deck, you're going to be uh, in for a nice little thing. So here's the one here, the pipe organ. So if you manage to get the pipe organ built, you will put it in the keyboard section for the first chair. Now, I'm not going to go into all of them. There's also bonus uh, tiles here. So you get multiple different bonus tiles on your game. I, I loved this. Uh, this is also just another way to get points. Oh, these are backwards. There we go. I, I, I didn't know I could flip those backwards. The point boards over here, and you can score all your points, which is great. Uh, you also have objectives that you can go for throughout the game as well. You get a starting family. The starting family gives you starting resources. And then the key part of this game that everyone has been talking about is what they call, people have been calling bidding, but I wouldn't really call it bidding. Uh, and that's that you have all of these different workers here. When you start the game, you have one, three, and five uh, at your disposal. And then when the time goes by uh, on the rounds at the end, at start of round three, you're going to get number two. And at the start of round five, you're going to have number worker number four. This is not only the value, like I pointed out earlier. So if you go with a higher value, you have something over four, you get a bonus. But it also is in the order in which that's going to operate. So if I go to an action spot with a five and the blue goes with a three, it's going to go in this order for each one of those evaluations, the actions, not in the player order itself, uh, which is really cool. Uh, I don't really consider that bidding. I think that's just the strategic placement of your goods. Uh, and then, of course, at any time, you can go to the market. The market in itself has cards here that allow the market to fluctuate. Up here is telling you what the average cost is, and then down here is telling you what the current cost is. And then you also have assistance, which give you a plus one to your 
worker. So if I put this with my four, my four is now a five. You also get inspiration tokens. These are plus ones to uh, your performances here in the salon. So you see you can use an inspiration token and get a plus one here. Uh, and you can also use an inspiration token, uh, two inspiration tokens when repairing in order to reduce the repair cost from a resource by one. So that's nice and cool. Uh, other than that, let's see, I think that covers all of the, the main core stuff. Oh, I guess you have these tracks here as well. It's just another mechanic here that is going to improve some of the actions related to that particular action there. Same here with the reputation track. What I did like about this is actually when you reach reputation, uh, this reputation here, you'll see here that these have a cost above them. It's always free to take them to one spot. However, the two spot is going to cost you money or inspiration. And they'll use for those inspiration tokens. If you want to go to the three spot, it's going to cost you eight. And if you want to draw from the top of the deck, you can spend 10, but you also need to get rid of an assistant. And that assistant is removed from the game. So this is very costly and not a good idea. But it is a there in case you need it. And so up here at the balcony is the last action spot. And that's where you can actually go to go and claim one of these rewards here. So if you, I did this reward three times, I would get eight points. So if I had three uh, instruments in the Baroque section here, I would go for that there. There are three different musical styles, Baroque, Classical, and Romance, which I loved. Uh, I just, the, the theming in this game is so spot on. It's very well done. Paverston uh, is the publisher. They also did Distilled. They did such a great job with this. I would highly recommend it for a nice Euro that it's going to be nice and quick to set up and to play. Okay, so let's take a look at the Kickstarter so you can see all the cool stuff you're going to get. You still have the chance to late pledge here. Um, once again, Vincent Dutrait, Paverson, amazing job here. The It already comes with a bunch of deluxe components as it is, uh, and some promos here. Uh, so the very base deluxe edition uh, is 100 American dollars. There's the Symphony one, which has some additional deluxe upgrades. That's the one that I pledged for, which has the upgraded player placement chips and some realistic resources. Then there's the Magnus Opus, which comes with this massive dice tower, a massive play mat. Uh, silk screen instruments and stuff like that. And though there's a little uh, dialogue here that tells you everything you're going to get. But let's take a look at the components because that's the real kicker here. We have double layered player boards as usual. Oh, I, there we go. So here is the concerto pledge. Uh, there is a promo pack that's coming here that uh, the Kickstarter people voted on and stuff. That's kind of cool. You get it there. The central board, uh, it's double-sided uh, for player count. Your boards here, these are all double-walled um, so that you can, uh, they're nice and thick and juicy. All of the cards that are coming with it. And then so metal coins. I love it when my cardboard coins are replaced with metal. So metal coins are by default in the Kickstarter here. All of the components that you get. The dice are going to be made of wood, which is really cute because the luthiers are doing with wood. Uh, there is the screen printed uh, point tracker tokens, the inspiration tokens. The base one is cardboard. Uh, the instrument tokens, another screen printed wood, which is great. Uh, the first player token is a baton, like a conductor thing. And then, oh, did I mention if you lose, you get the world's smallest violin. So cute. Uh, these are the base resources. Uh, so the I, I got the deluxe version, which has updated resources and has updated worker apprentice tracks. So look at all of these wooden components. Here's the kicker. It all comes organized already. So the setup of this game is going to be nice and quick. I love it when people go in here with dice trays and partner with them. Uh, this isn't actually by dice trays. This is by uh, a former dice trays employee that started up their new company, uh, which is really cool. So Symphony Pledge that I backed, these are becoming clay, kind of like the iron clays from brass, I do believe. Uh, and so as I said, cast gypsum resin, I'm not entirely sure what that is, but they're going to be clunky uh, and weighty. Uh, and then we have all of the realistic resources again. You got a digital soundtrack and the enamel inspiration token. So instead of a cardboard inspiration token, you're now going to match your uh, money tokens and actually be able to have your inspiration tokens also be metal. Then you've got the Magnus Opus. Um, I actually did an add-on for the sleeves for mine. 
um, but this one does come with the sleeves. These are the instrument standees. I think these actually look kind of cheap, so I don't like them. Um, we'll see if they change that because, of course, it is a Kickstarter. Then you've got this pipe organ dice tower. Uh, this is a separate boxed item. Uh, the entire idea here is that you can use this dice tower for any other thing. It's really cute. Then it comes with a giant play mat. This is like the size of your table. Uh, but the idea here is that on one side, you have the play mat for the game, but you could flip it over and it's got this fake wood uh, design to it so that you can go over there. Uh, so, and I mentioned custom inserts, which, ooh, love add-ons. And here's the dice insert here, which is kind of hilariously cute. Ta-da! Anyways, it's not too late to late pledge. I highly recommend giving Luther by Private String Games a check out. We have played it at two and three players. It works great. Uh, we've given them some feedback. They're very open and receptive. And that's it for today. We will see you next time.